Hello, Buchanan Church of God and our extended online family. Thanks again for joining me uh, each and every Wednesday. We're looking at uh, some different things. Uh, uh, we're spending some time in Philippians. Uh, today we are looking at Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 uh, through 11. And I encourage you, uh, if you did not listen to uh, Sunday sermon, uh, I encourage you to go back uh, onto our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube uh, slash Buchanan Church. Uh, get on the um, up at the top. You'll see live. Uh, click on the uh, the live at the top, and that'll that'll give you the uh, recent uh, live streams uh, that we've done. I encourage you to to listen to. Uh, you know, the, the Philippians 2 sermon first, and then uh, this will be a nice uh, you know, compliment then, you know, I think, to it uh, as we dig a little bit, little bit deeper. So let's take a look. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, have them available there. Or if you don't, you just want to listen, uh, I'm certainly uh, going to read our text here for us today. Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse, with verse 1. And it says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross." Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Okay, so as we uh, make our way through Philippians chapter 2 here, these first 11 verses, there's really a, a lot to, to unpack and so I, when we look at the first verse there, you know, Paul makes a lot of if statements. And w w what he's really doing, let me, let me read it again. It says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit, and purpose. So, uh, you know, Paul is really just, you know, simply here uh, introducing uh, his exhortation to unity, his encouragement uh, to, to unity and humility and, and love uh, among the believers. So he's saying, hey, if you have these things in your life, here, here's what I want you to do with them. Here's what I, I want you to understand uh, what what that is and what that means to you and what what you can do with that certainly as a as a believer, and so you know Paul is here really invoking a response I think more than anything and and, and you think about you know what is the hope of the response he wants the Philippians to have well the idea is if the the Philippian Christians have received all of these things that he's mentioned in verse one then it goes on to say hey there's a responsibility. Uh, if you have these things, then there's a responsibility of what we're asking you to do. And he begins to describe that. And, and really, the, the goal comes in, in, um, in, verse, in verse 2, and it says, then, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. So Paul's saying, hey, you know, my joy will be fulfilled. My joy will be complete. And this, this really, you know, ends up being a, a, really a personal request here from Paul. He's saying, hey, you know, I, I'm going to get, I'm also going to get a lot, you're going to get a lot out of it by doing this, uh, you know, but I'm going to get a lot out of this personally. Um, 
by you doing this also. Uh, you know, Paul, one of the reasons Paul wanted the Philippians to, to really listen to, you know, these words was that they needed to know, um, you know, not only what would make Paul happy, but also what will make the church happy. So he, you know, it's not, it's not a, you can look at this and, and say, well, gosh, this is a selfish request from Paul. And, and, you know, yes, there was a personal request there, but, you know, Paul's not so concerned about himself. He's going to get joy out of this, but he wants them to understand that, hey, this is going to make you happy. If you do these things, if you, you know, react and, and uh, are like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose, obviously unity, that means, you know, you're going to be happy. You're going to find some joy. You're going to find that this life, as difficult as it is, as challenging as it is, as hard as it is in living as the body of Christ, there's going to be happiness and joy that, that uh, certainly comes from that. So, you know, it really, you know, Paul's really speaking here of a, a deep uh, abiding, a ter- in, in, internal unity here uh, that he wants the Philippians to have and the church to, to, to have. So, w- when we look, you know, Paul kind of connects uh, his instruction. And, and we think, we look at verse 5 here again. Um, and the question is, is, how does verse 5 connect to Paul's instruction not to be selfish. Well, it says uh, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. So this is the first step in understanding unity. Um, You know, the reality is, is in our own lives, in the flesh, uh, we're motivated by selfish ambition. We're motivated by our our own needs. We're we're motivated by, um, you know, arrogance or conceit. So what we have to do and, and, and how we have to change our mindset then is that we have to do things not out of a love for ourselves or selfish ambition, but out of a love for others. Uh, we have to desire uh, you know, to, to advance others, to promote others, not to have, you know, selfish. So, and, and that's very different from the world, right? I mean, you, you'll, you know, if you, if you've listened to the sermon and we talked a little bit about that, you know, the world, you know, see things very different. I think I used the, the example of when you're on a, on a plane and, uh, you know, when the flight attendant, you know, gives the instructions before the, the flight uh, begins and if the max, if you know if the oxygen masks come down, um, you know please put your oxygen mask on before helping other people. Now, from an intellectual standpoint, I totally understand what they mean. They want you thinking clearly. The oxygen will help you to think clearly about things. Um, there's, there won't be any fog. You'll be able to you know to breathe, and then you can think clearly to be able to help the person that's sitting beside you. Okay, I get it. You know, I totally, I totally understand from an intellectual standpoint. But from a spiritual standpoint, Jesus says, don't worry about your own oxygen mask. Help the other person get theirs on, and then you get yours on. You know? So you see, a, you, you see the, the mindset. You see how, uh, you know, differently that is compared to the thinking of the, uh, of the world. So, you know... I, We think, see here, Jesus, it says, you know, being in the very nature of God. We look in verses 6 to 8, you know, he goes on. It says, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing. We're talking about Jesus here. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Okay, so, you know, when we describe this being the very nature of God, you know, we're describing Jesus really pre-existence, okay? Um, You have to understand that Jesus existed before his birth in Bethlehem, Bethlehem, okay? You know, Jesus didn't just come onto the scene about you. Jesus always existed with God, just like the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You know, they all pre-existed. They all existed, okay, uh, to, together. So uh, that pre-existing of, of Jesus, he didn't just come on, on the scene when he was born in Bethlehem. He has been on the scene 
uh, for ever so he came in human form being born uh as a as a man as a per and not born as a man but born as a person a human uh, born as a baby you know in, in bethlehem we know the story uh we you know we tell at christmas time and so you know that really describes his existence we need to remind ourselves that you know god is eternal that jesus is eternal and and you know that's hard sometimes you know when you're new to the faith it's hard to grasp that a little bit your friends maybe that are that are asking questions you know sometimes you know it's hard to to fully understand that and know that but you know that we 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 understand and we know that you know jesus existed before uh he came on the scene at uh, at bethlehem's bethlehem so uh, was he still equal with god when he came to, to earth as a man well jesus possessed not only a human nature, but he also possessed that divine nature. Uh, he didn't cease being God just because he was was uh, he took on the, uh, the the human form, the human flesh. Um, and I, I and I, it's interesting here to to think, you know, to to really kind of take a look uh, at the fact that. Uh, you know, God, he, you know, Jesus did not regard equality with God something, oh, excuse me, something to be used for his own advantage. Um, you know, Jesus wasn't trying to achieve equality with, with, with his father while he was had. He already had it. You know, just because he was human, he, he didn't, you know, knock him down a, a few pegs, okay? He was still divine. He was still human. He was still divine. Now, I, I you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here before you and saying, gosh, I, I, I'm smart enough to be able to, 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 to understand that and to, to link that together. But I, but I believe it. I believe that, that Jesus was fully man. He was fully divine. That is why he was able to do the things that he did. But he chose not to take advantage of the divine side. You know, he certainly could have come on the scene and said, "Hey, uh, you know, do you know who my dad is?" <laughs> you know, and, and use that certainly to his advantage. He did not do that. You know, he took on you know that human form so that he could serve, that he could do, so he could go to the cross for us. Uh, so, I, you know, that really kind of you know helps to explain the the phrase he made himself nothing. In other, in other words, he you know he emptied himself. Um, uh, you know, I, I like that word better than than he made himself nothing because I, I just I, I think there's 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 images there's things that we think about when we say say the word nothing. But he emptied himself. Uh, you know, it was a, a self emptying. Uh, that Jesus did, that, that he was willing then, you know, to fill himself then with uh, the human side so that he could be a, a servant. So I think when we think about that, Paul tells us that we must uh, think about Jesus in, in, in that way, that he was, you know, fully human, he was fully divine. Um, and that really helps us to, to have a better, you know, understanding. The, the reason that he was able to remain sinless is because he was still fully divine you know he was able to resist the temptations of satan he was able to do but then you know in experience in the cross you know he didn't just switch over you know he certainly could have called you know we talked about this in the sermon it could have called you know ten thousand angels to come and 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 get him uh and take it no but he went he was willing the human side to experience all of that, to experience that pain, to experience the suffering. And remember, you know, he was taking on the sin of the whole world. You and I weren't born yet, but he was taking on our sin. So he was taking on the whole sin of the world, the pain, the suffering, the misery, the agony that, that, uh, that went um, with that. Um, you know, Jesus, he didn't exchange deity for hum humanity. Uh, he took the form of, uh, of a servant. And, and that really simply describes how Jesus emptied himself. Uh, he took that form of a servant. Um, he still had the attributes. He was still uh, equal with God. But he emptied himself so that he could take on the form uh, of a man and be that servant. So, I, you know, when we think about that, I, 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 think, I think it just reminds us how awesome, you know, Jesus is. How, um, you know, so wonderful uh, so amazing uh, that he was willing to do that all for, for us because he loved us. 
He was willing to be obedient to, to his heavenly father, to do all of that, to, to step down from heaven, to become like us, you know, so that we could know him, so that we could have a relationship with him, uh, so that we could be saved uh, by him. So, you know, just remember that. Remember that sacrifice. Remember what, what Jesus, you know, be reminded really what Jesus has done uh, for each one of us. So when we look at verses 9 to 11, let me read this. It says, Therefore God exalted him then to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So who will bow a knee to Christ? Uh, well, eventually everybody will. Uh, you know, everybody will, will bow. Everybody will confess. Now, uh, you know, let's talk about that for, for a moment. Uh, what's significant about that is, you know, you may have friends, you may have family members, you have people you work with or go to school with says, you know what, I don't want anything to do with God. I, there's, you know, nothing about God. I don't believe in Him. I don't trust Him. I don't, you know, uh, they will bow. They will eventually bow. Now, here's the key. While everybody will bow eventually, uh, not everybody is going to, you know, be, you know, will enter into, uh, you know, that, that time with God to, to be, uh, you know, eternally uh, with God. Uh, that, that's why it's important to bow today, now, to come before the Lord, to confess our, our sins, to repent, to, you know, do it willingly before God so that you and I, you know, have our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. For those atheists, for those Buddhists, for those that, you know, don't know Christ, that don't have a relationship uh, with, with Jesus, yes, they're going to, to bow too, uh, to the one true God. But, you know, their, their life is going to then follow a life of, uh, of destruction. Uh, so, you know, how important that, that, that is for us to, to understand, you know, that every single one of us are, are, are going to, to, uh, to confess and, and to, you know, bow our knee to, to, to Christ. Um, do it today. Do it now. Do it while we are still, you know, living on, on this earth. Do it in a way that, that uh, you're willing and, and, and able and you want to because you want to serve Christ and, and live uh, for Him. Uh, you know, you know, bowing, you know, has a, has a lot of, you know, significance, you know, to it. It, it means that you and I are, you know, are submitting. We're recognizing uh, Christ in, in, our, in our lives. And, you know, those, those unbelievers that, that uh, you know, don't bow on this side of heaven, um, you know, they will admit, you know, they will bow before uh, the Lord, but it, it will not be a pleasurable thing. It will be, uh, you know, something that, uh, that leads then to, to destruction. That's not how we want to live. You know, we want to live a life of joy and abundance and, and what the Lord is, is saying and giving to us and living that life that, that He, you know, has in store for us. You know, there's so much blessing and so much joy and so much uh, of what God wants to say and, and do to us in this life. We miss out. If we, we don't submit before Him, if we don't bow down before Him, if we don't confess our sins before Him, if we don't accept Him into our lives, there's so much that we miss out. So I want to encourage you, you know, if you haven't made a decision for Christ, will you do that? Will, will, you, will you accept Christ? Will you ask Him into your heart? Will you confess your sins before Him? And will you live a life that is committed and dedicated to Him? I encourage you to, to do that. You know, part of this... Uh, you know, this lesson, it really encourages us uh, to not only see, you know, the humility of Christ, but, you know, how, how that is so important in our lives, that, that you and I can humble ourselves before the Lord. And we also can be servants. I, I you know, hey, I, I'll, I'll never be like, totally like Jesus, I, you know, because, you know, none of us are, you know, but I can strive to be like Jesus. You know, we don't want to make an excuse. I, I, you know, I hear people sometimes say, well, you know, I can't be perfect so that, you know, don't allow that to become an excuse for you. You know, we're striving to be perfect as, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Do we ever reach that? No. But I, but I think sometimes people bail out because they're like, well, I, you know, I can never really, re, you know, I can never really receive that. So, I'm, and, I, and I think they, they fall short so often. So, 
it's striving. It's, it, we keep growing. We keep moving. We keep doing the things that God encourages us to do. We love Him. Uh, we serve Him. We live for Him. And, and we serve and are there for the people around us. So just remember that. You know, as you're, you're living your life, uh, you know, the world looks at that very differently. The word, world says, hey, look out for, number one, look out for your own needs, your own interests. But I'm going to encourage you to, to listen to what Paul says, what, what you know, Jesus' example is to us, uh, to live a life committed and dedicated to Him, to serve others, to value others, to recognize others more and better than yourself. And uh, I think you'll see how the Lord will bless you through that, how it'll give you a perspective that uh, goes beyond anything you've ever imagined or can think. And we're so grateful for that, grateful for the, what the Lord is doing and what He continues to do in each one of our hearts and, uh, and, and, our, and our lives. Let's, uh, let's bow as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, so much for Your love and care. And we thank You for just the encouragement uh, that You give to us to live a life of servanthood of submission we thank you lord that uh, for those of us that have chosen to bow before you on this side of heaven lord the, the blessings and the, the the love and the the forgiveness uh, the things that lord come to us because of that we know that everybody will bow eventually lord but it will those that, that don't bow on on this side lord will will eventually bow to uh, to you but it will not lead to eternal life it will lead to eternal destruction and eternal death for them and so lord we pray for our, our loved ones we pray for our family we pray for our co-workers our schoolmates lord that don't know you we pray that they would come to a understanding and a knowledge of you lord give us opportunities to to lead our friends and family and co-workers and schoolmates, Lord, to you. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your willingness, Lord, to step from heaven, from your deity, from your position, Lord, to, to come and to be with us, to be human, to take on that, that humanness, Lord. While that divine nature was never lost, Lord, you were willing to, uh, to empty yourself, Lord, so that you could serve and be a servant. We're so grateful for that. Thank you for the example, Lord, that you give to us. Help us to be that example, Lord. Help us to follow that example and be uh, that servant, Lord, in each one of our lives. And we ask these things in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Hey, thanks again so much for spending some time uh, with me on, uh, on these Wednesdays. Uh, I hope that uh, your life continues to, to be blessed. I hope you continue to just follow and understand what God is doing and working uh, in your life. So thanks again for uh, just spending some time with me. And, and most importantly, thank you for spending time in God's Word today. God bless. Take care.